So example one is, let me write it down. Oh, can't write it down right. It's y equals x minus 2 squared minus 9. So our equation is already in vertex form. And we know that vertex form is a times x minus h squared plus k. And part D is asking us to identify the vertex. State the vertex and identify it as a maximum or minimum. And so we know that our vertex our vertex is going to be h comma k. We have our h, we have our k. Here's our k value, here's our h value. So you generally want to match up the vertex form with the coefficients that go along with them, but you do have to be careful with whether there's a plus or a minus sign in front of your coefficients. So for our h value, you have a minus h. In our equation in example one, we have a minus two. So this time, our h value will be a two. So we can say that we'll have a two, but for our k value, we have a plus k. In our example up here, we have a minus nine, but you wanna make sure you remember that if you're subtracting nine, it's the same thing as adding a negative nine. Adding a negative nine is the same thing as subtracting positive nine, I guess you could say it like that. So, with a plus sign being here, we know that our k value will be a minus 9. We can say our vertex is 2 minus 9. So yeah, just by looking at the equation, we can identify where the vertex is. Now, I haven't even graphed it in Desmos, um, but I'm looking at the the A value. The A value will give you an idea of whether the graph will be an upward shape U, an upward, an upward U, or I guess a downward U. One, one of those. We know that if A is positive, it's going to be facing up. If A is negative, it's going to be down. So in this case, we have a positive one in the front. So we know that our graph will look something like this, where it's a U going, I guess, facing up. So I guess the question is, if we know that our graph is going to face up, will our vertex be a maximum or a minimum value? What do you guys think? I'll do a poll. I'll do a poll so I can get... And if you're unsure, um, you're looking at the, the y-axis and you're seeing whether the vertex is um, the smallest, I'll say the lowest value or the highest value of your graph. If the vertex is the lowest value, then it's a minimum. If the vertex is the highest value, it's a maximum. And generally, our vertex will be in the bottom part of the U if it's this example, and it'll be in the upper part of the U if it's that example.
All right, so All right, most people said most people said min, some said max. I, I do like to have a visual, so I will go ahead and graph this in Desmos so you guys get a an image in your head of what the vertex, what it looks like on the graph. And then we can confirm our answer. We can verify our answer. All right, so let me open up Desmos. All right, so our equation is x minus 2, entire quantity squared, minus 9. We have that, yep, that upward, upward facing u. And we know that our vertex is going to be at the point 2 comma minus 9. So this is our vertex. And we have to ask ourselves, is this the lowest value on this graph? Or is it the highest value? If it's the lowest value, it's the minimum. If it's the highest value, it's the maximum. And I can tell you one thing. Um, if I were to go over here, this zero, this is a zero value. This value was higher than this value. It's because I moved up. Because we're looking at the y-axis. This value has a higher y value than this value. So that should tell you that our vertex is going to be a minimum. Yes. The lowest will be a minimum. So we can go ahead and answer part D on the paper or in your notes. I'll use red again. So our vertex is at 2 comma 9. And as a minimum value. And this is our part D, for example, number one. All right. And I don't think we can do anything else without the graph. I think the other functions, or at least the other parts, A, B, C, and E, we need to actually look at the graph. So let's go ahead and look back at our Desmos graph, so we can complete those other parts. And we'll just do the other ones in order. We'll do A, and then B, and then C, and then skip the part E. All right, so we need, let's see, part A is asking us for describe the domain and the range and interval notation. So when we talk about domain and range, we're looking at the graph as a whole. Um, the domain is talking about where along the x-axis does our function take up values. And the image that I'm showing you is kind of a misconception because you don't see the entire graph, but the graph extends all the way up forever. If I scroll up, it keeps going. It keeps going, it keeps going, and you could go on up forever. So this should tell us something about the x values or about the domain. So for part a different color. For part A,
the domain, we're talking about the x-axis and where the graph takes on values within the x-axis. And it's going to be all real numbers. But we usually write that as minus infinity to positive infinity. And they also ask for the range. And this, is be, this will be the values that our function takes on the y-axis. Joseph, yes, this is all for example number one. I guess I really didn't need that squiggly line in between. I could have just kept writing A. Now our range is the values that our function takes on the y-axis. And since we have a minimum value, we can't say that the range is from minus infinity to positive infinity. We have to limit or cut off our, our range because of this minimum value. But like I showed you before, if we look at the y-axis, if I were to go all the way up, the function continues to grow. So we do know that the function extends off to a positive infinity. It's a long graph. But the question is, what is the, the lowest value that our function takes on in terms of the y value? You guys can post that answer in the chat if you know what that lowest y value is. Nicholas, yes. The lowest y value is a minus nine. So the vertex does tell you, I guess, other information besides um, where the vertex is. I guess the vertex tells you two things. It tells you where the axis of symmetry is, and it tells you where the, the lowest, I'll say the minimum value is for the range. So for our range, our lowest value is a minus 9, and the highest value, it goes all the way up to infinity. I'm going to draw a parentheses on the right side because it continues through infinity. It keeps going on forever. But on the left side, the graph doesn't go anywhere below minus 9, and it includes minus 9. So I'm going to draw a bracket on the left side. All right, then part different part B. So the bracket tells us that the function um, it's equal the lowest value that it reaches is minus nine because sometimes a function it may get really close to a number, but it may never touch a number. But we use a bracket when it says when it does equal the value that it does actually touch or that it includes. And actually, that's a good question because generally you guys will include brackets only when we're talking about domain and range. Because I know example or I know part E in this question will ask about um, whether the function is increasing or decreasing, you don't want to have a bracket when you talk about increasing or decreasing. Ooh, 
Ooh, was that part B? Is part B L-E-B and R-E-B? Yes. So we'll do Actually, I'll do this on the next line. We'll do a lot of space. So LEB stands for the left end behavior. REB, the right end behavior. And this is when we look at the graph and we kind of describe what is happening with our function um, as you look off to the right end and as you look off to the left end. So yeah, this was something we learned back in unit, unit one. It may have been like day three or day four, but let me explain it one more time. All right, so we have our vertex at two comma minus nine. And we can say that if you look at the vertex, everything off to the right will be the right in behavior. And if you look at the vertex, everything off to the left is the left in behavior. So we're going to ask ourselves as X approaches a positive infinity, what is our function doing? Is it increasing or is it decreasing? And you generally want to ask if you were to walk on this graph, are you walking uphill or are you walking downhill? And that's what they want you to describe with the, the left and the right in behavior. So let me go back to, yes, Andy, you're right. It is increasing off to the right. Let me go back to the camera. And there is a special way you guys want to answer this question, or at least there's a special way you want to write it down. So you want to say for the left in behavior, as X approaches minus infinity, because when you go to the left, you're approaching a minus infinity in the X values. You can say F of X F of X is increasing. So looking at the graph, if you start at the vertex, and then move off to the left towards, towards negative infinity, we're walking uphill as we walk along that function. When we walk uphill, it is increasing. And then yeah, Andy answered the question about the right in behavior. So we would write that as X approaches positive infinity, because we're going off to the right side and the right side will approach positive infinity. F of X is also increasing. All right, hopefully you guys had enough time to write all of this stuff down. LEB is the left end behavior, and you would answer that as X approaches minus infinity. And for example, number one, F of X is increasing. And then the same for the right end behavior. As X approaches positive infinity, F of X is also increasing. Now, for a graph with something different, 
we would only have to change those two values depending on the graph, but the first part is what you want to write for, for both of those. As X approaches negative infinity, as X approaches positive infinity. All right, let's look at part C. This is still example number one. Part C is asking for name the X intercepts or the zeros and the Y intercepts. And I'll go back to the graph. because Desmos does a wonderful job of identifying both of those for us. Now our x-intercepts, they're also called the zeros, the roots, the solutions, and that is where our graph crosses the x-axis. So when we click on our graph, they already have highlighted where it hits the x-axis. So our first x-intercept is at minus one comma zero. And our second x-intercept is at five comma zero. And our y-intercept is where our function crosses the y-axis. And if we zoom over there, there's our y-intercept. It's at 0, comma, minus 5. Now, if we didn't have a graph to look at, or if we didn't have Desmos, if we didn't have a calculator, um, we would be able to find the, the zeros or the x-intercepts by solving for x, or first by factoring, and then using the zero product property to solve for x. And then I think it was like the very, it may have been the very last day of unit one where we talked about the y intercepts, where we had to switch our x and y values and then I think solve for, for the variable. So there are ways you can solve for each of the intercepts algebraically, but using Desmos or a calculator is a lot quicker and it'll save you much time. So if you have it in Desmos, you can just scroll over each point and identify them. If you're doing it on paper, it's definitely a lot more work and a lot more time consuming. All right. And then we already did part D, so we'll go on to the very last part, part E. So I wrote down the X intercepts and the Y intercepts. Let's see, part D. And then part E is asking for, let me see, what is part E? Identify the intervals of increase and decrease. So this is really similar to part B, the left and right in behavior. So when we look at our graph, It 
if we were to imagine us walking on our graph or riding a bike on this graph, um, you would have intervals of where you're walking uphill and walking downhill. And if we were to start off on the very far left, let's say if we were to start from x equals minus infinity and come all the way up to the point x equals 2, would we be walking uphill or downhill? So we're starting from the left and coming up to the vertex. Yes, thank you, Andy. Thank you, Christina. We're walking downhill. I know that's a very steep hill. I wouldn't want to walk on that. I feel like that's more of a roller coaster. <laughs> oh, I didn't even realize that. I saw the D-O-W and I just read downhill. And then likewise, if we were to start at the vertex and then walk to the right towards positive infinity, are we walking uphill or downhill now? So this is our starting point, and then we just start walking this way. Are we going uphill or downhill? Yes. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Christina. Thank you, Luis. Yes, you guys got it. All right, so we would just write that, and I think they want it in, do they ask for a specific notation? No, they don't ask for a specific notation, but we would write it. I guess you could say like this. We could say the it's increasing. We said from the vertex to positive infinity. That's when we're walking uphill. And then we were walking downhill or decreasing from a minus infinity to the two value. So those are those are all five parts of describing, I guess, characteristics or describing the parts of a quadratic function. So I'm going to do, I'll do one more example. I'll do example number three, and then I'll open up the pair deck, and I'll let you guys attempt examples two and four. So let's get, now I'll draw my line. Here we go. I like this. All right, so this will do example number three. And let's see, where is it? We have a minus x squared plus 2x plus 8. And our equation is in standard form. It's not in vertex form. But I have one thing that stands out. I see this, this minus sign. That minus sign is standing out like a sore thumb right now. And that minus sign tells me that my graph is going to be upside down. It's going to be something like that. And so if I look at or if I think of the vertex, it'll be where the graph changes from increasing to decreasing, but this time it'll be a maximum. But it's hard to identify the, the vertex, the H and the K, when it's in standard form. So we're gonna go ahead and put 
this function in Desmos and then verify where this vertex is. All right, the equation is a minus x squared plus 2x plus 8. Sorry, I got my phone. All right, let me go to the graph and then I hovered over the vertex and here's the maximum value. So I guess we can go ahead and do part D, which is the easiest. I can label the vertex as one comma nine. and my vertex is a maximum value. So this is part D. And then now that we actually have the graph of the function, I think the next easiest step would be part C, identifying the X and the Y intercept. So my one of my x intercepts is minus two comma zero. And my other x intercept is four comma zero. And the second part of part C asks for the y-intercept, where it crosses the y-axis, and we get 0, 0,8. So I believe, yeah, part C and part D are the easiest when you do have Desmos or a graphing calculator. So let me go ahead and share this. So I wrote down, I wrote this down, the vertex, and it's a maximum, because our graph is something like this. And then I just hovered over the points to get the x-intercepts and the y-intercepts. All right. I guess since we're since we're working backwards, let's do part. I guess we'll do part B. D, C, B, A, and then we'll go back to E. Part B. Part B asks us to look at the what is it? Describe the left and the right end behavior. We need the left in behavior, the right in behavior. We can say as X approaches minus infinity, because we're going off to the left side, F of X is blank. And for this one, I'll put as X approaches positive infinity because we're going off to the right side f of x is blank i have to look at the graph because i don't remember i think it's what it's upside down 
I guess if we if we use this as our as our diagram, we ha kind of had the general form of our graph. So the left end behavior is saying if we start at the vertex and as x approaches minus infinity, are we going uphill or downhill? Yes, it's decreasing downhill. All right. So I will put So this is continuing on from this line, guys. As x approaches minus infinity, f of x is decreasing. And yep, it's the same for the other one too. If we look at the vertex and go off to positive infinity, this is off to the right, the right in behavior, our function is also going downhill. And downhill is decreasing. So we will say the same thing. And yeah, definitely remember to write the entire thing as x approaches either negative infinity or positive infinity, f of x is either increasing or decreasing. All right, and then we'll do part, we'll do part A. For part D, yeah, I said, well, I said the vertex is at this location and it's a maximum. Thirteen, Andy, where are you getting thirteen from? Oh, sorry for my band hunter. Yeah, this is just the this is is. 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 <laughs> Third <laughs> and is a maximum. My my red marker smears a little bit. <laughs> it's it's both ways, Christina. I can't write, so we're both we're both to blame. All right, so we'll do. We'll see. We were on A next. And if everyone's okay, I'm going to flip the page. I will go to part A. Let's see. Part A, they ask us about, um, what do they ask us about? The domain and the range. Yes. So the domain and the range. And remember, our domain is with our x-axis. Our range is with the y-axis. And this is the option where we can use the brackets, depending on how the graph looks. So when we look at the, when we look at the graph again, let me switch back. So the domain is the first, um, I guess the first part of Option A, we're looking at the x-axis. And if we were to go all the way to the right, we would probably find a point, but it'd be really far down. And the same thing with the negative x values, if we went all the way to the left, we would probably find a point, but it would be all the way down here. So we can say that our function, 
the domain for our function is all real numbers. And we can write that as minus infinity to positive infinity. And now the range is what's going to be a little bit different. Because we have a maximum value, but our minimum value keeps going on and on forever. So the minimum value we know is going to be a minus infinity. And then what is our maximum value for our range? What is that highest value that our function reaches in that graph? Yes, thank you, Joseph. A nine. I'm going to put a parentheses on the left side. What do you think I should put on the right side, you guys? Yes, thank you, Joseph a bracket because our function does not go past nine it does include nine though all right i'm gonna write it over here because i can barely see it i'm gonna put minus infinity comma infinity i'll put minus infinity comma nine i don't like things crammed in between lines so i put it off over here too All right, then the last part is part E. I'll use different color. Let's see, part E asks for the intervals of increasing and decreasing. So I'll put increase decrease increase and decrease and the general shape of our graph was an upside down u so if we were to walk on this graph I know I'd be walking this way, going up to the vertex, then I'd be walking this way, going away from the vertex. So hopefully this gives you an idea of where it's increasing and decreasing. The vertex is like where it splits up. So we're walking uphill, it's increasing from a minus infinity to I believe the X value was one. Or I guess the location of our vertex, I believe this was one comma nine. So I get this one from the X value. And then we're decreasing from one to a positive infinity. So we have uphill and this interval downhill in this interval. All right, I know those parts are out of order, not A through E we did, I guess, backwards. I'm going to take a poll. I want to see how comfortable you guys are with answering those, each of those five separate options.
because I know with the Pear Deck, the answers are included. Um, I know one slide is a question. The very next slide is the answers. So I can monitor your guys' progress and I can help you guys out if you need the help, I guess. For those that answer, yes, I need more practice or yes, I'm highly confused. I can help you guys out while you complete those problems. Um, but I do wanna make sure I have enough of time to get everybody enrolled into Go Formative. So I think we'll do the Pear Deck for about 10 to 15 minutes. And then the last, I'll say the last five or six minutes, we'll get into Go Formative. 